welcome inside the WOSN studios for another edition of Mark's Madness, joined by Mark Miller. I'm Matt Finkel, and Mark, week one in the books. Teams finally got to take to the field and yeah. show what they're made of, and some teams really made the most of it. Some dominant yeah. victories out there. Lots of points. Well, I, I, that's the one thing that as I look back, looking at scores, just a lot of points were scored. And, and uh, you know, the weather was good for the most part. I know a couple of games down in the Cincinnati area got delayed because of weather. But around here, the weather was good, not as hot as it could have been. It was a great way to kick the season off. Absolutely. Let's start with Lima Senior. They had a yep. dominant win. They got that clock moving in the second half. You were there yep. with, with Mark Schein. That's right. What did you see there out of the Spartans? Well, I saw that they're, pre they're pretty good. You know, they're they pretty are. good. Now, um, you know, Marion had some injuries to some of their key players, and they're reloading a little bit, but that, take nothing away from the Spartans. They were prepared. Uh, Darius Gordon, the question was, can he be the next quarterback, the next great one? He threw five touchdowns, got beat up a little bit, but bounced back every time. Uh, Janiel Lyles is, is, you know, player of the year in the, on offense in the area last year. And, Mike Fowles and, excited yeah, about him oh, coming back. I mean, he's, he's a man. I mean, he just, uh, he breaks tackles. He makes people miss. Uh, he had 169 yards on only 12 carries. Now, the second half, we, we got a chance to see that new rule, you know, continuous yep. clock. And, uh, but by halftime, it was 41 nothing. It was over. You know, and probably, probably could have been a little bit more than that. Uh, Lima Sr. turned it over a couple of times. But they looked very, very good. Uh, going to Mansfield Sr. will be a little bit more of a test, I think. Yeah, we might learn a little bit more about them in week yep. two. But great yep. way to start. Yep. How about yep. another perennial powerhouse in the area, Marion Local, yep. defending state champs. Mm -hmm. And they take on Shawnee week one and they shut them out and yeah. they, ha they had a lot to replace the Flyers did so that's yes, a big did. win for them. Yeah it really is and you look again at the quarterback you know because Adam Berkey's at Pitt now but Dustin Rethman comes in and and he played last year when Adam was hurt a little bit but then he got hurt so you know he didn't get a chance to finish that time off but he played very very well threw the ball well and and of course JC Gutter Miller is as good a running back as you can ask for in the MAC. and but Hunter Wilker keep your eye out for this guy because he's a receiver he can catch him and he's also a kick and punt returner he took a punt to the house, so he's a big play guy. Um, Tim Goodwin is just, I mean, to say they're a dynasty down there does not do it justice, you know. And they got Coldwater in the same league and all those other good teams, you know, and they still just keep winning. So uh, they are, they're at an interesting team uh, in the Detroit area, and I got to read it because I'll get it mixed up. Riverview, Gabriel, Richard, Catholic. Yeah, long name. Yeah, no, they're 1-0. Cool. Yeah. That's all I know. They play Detroit area teams, and that typically means that they'll have some speed and some skill. All right, we talked to Tim Goodwin about scheduling that game. It's, you know, Marion Local is a tough opponent, obviously, and they're a smaller school. So, yeah. go, you know, they'll get an opponent from Michigan, and we'll see how they look. And But they're off to a great start, 1-0. Yeah. Yeah. Staying in the MAC, Coldwater, tough opener mm -hmm. against Kenton, just like last year. And they right. lost last year right. to Kenton, but this year coming back with a little revenge. Yeah, last year, 22-2, they lose. Yeah. This year, they win 24-2. to So, they're just trading safeties, games. I yeah. guess. But, yeah, Kenton, an excellent program. Now, they're, they're reloading a lot, you know, new coach even though he's on the staff, new head coach, new offensive coordinator, new quarterback, um, some new receivers. So they got a lot of new coming, and to open up with Coldwater is a pretty tough challenge. But Brody Hoying, what, what can you say? You know, ran for 200, threw a couple, had three touchdowns rushing. Uh, but I think the defense is really the key here. They had three turnovers, only gave up 182 yards passing. When you play Kenton and keep them below 200 for a game, that's really good. I've seen them have 500 and a half. So, Absolutely. We know uh, how they like to swing, swing yeah, it around. Yeah, Bishop Hartley this week, and you, you mentioned revenge earlier. Bishop Hartley got beat by these guys twice last year. Their only two losses, once in a regular season, bad, like 41-6. to six, And then in the state championship, 24-7 to seven or 6 or whatever it was. So they, they think that they've got to come back, but they've got to get around Brody Hoyne, that's for sure. Absolutely. Talk with Brody Hoyne. He'll be the subject of this week's OIO prep profile. And he's looking forward to that game, and he knows that Bishop's going to be coming after them. Yeah. So they're going to be preparing extra hard. Good challenge at home. That helps the Cavaliers a little bit. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, so any surprises from week one? I mean, with those yeah. teams, we expected them to win. Uh -huh. um, we, know yeah. what, we know what to expect out of them going forward. We're expecting them to be very good football teams. What about, what were some of the surprises? Well, the first thing I looked at was upsets. I didn't see a lot of upsets, but what I saw was scores that really surprised me. I didn't think St. Mary's was going to score 71 points. I'm thinking they didn't score 71 all last year. And they were playing Sydney. Sydney's not a bad football Sydney's team. A good team. A pretty good program. So that surprised me. Spencerville over Lipsick. I thought Spencerville would win. I didn't think they'd win 51-0. I didn't think their defense would keep Lipsick to 100 yards. Lipsick's a pretty good program also. So right. those are two what I would say surprises. Uh, Zach Gokey, I think, uh, served notice on the rest of the league. 168 yards, four touchdowns. and. 
it didn't take him many carries. He's a man carrying that football for Without John Zerby's doubt. crew. And yeah. going up against some really big guys yeah. at Lipsick. So that's yeah, an Lipsick, impressive Lipsick's going to win a lot of games. Oh, I mean, yeah. that, that, that loss is not indicative of the kind of season they're going to have. So Spencerville, often, often really running because they run it, man. So – Doug Fry and St. Mary's kind of qualifies as a statement yeah. victory. It's all a yeah. surprise for sure, you know, that they snapped that long losing streak and he returns mm -hmm. to, to this great win. They had 500 rushing yards in the yeah. first half, finished yeah. with 71 total points. Amazing. What were some of the other statement wins that you picked out from week one? I thought Salina's win over Versailles, 26-3, to was a statement that Salina is, is still here. Last year wasn't a flash in the pan. They're good again because Versailles is a solid program. Lots of state championships in their hallway trophy cases. Yep. I thought Hard Northern, no matter who you win after what they – or who you beat after what they've been through the last few years, they beat St. Wendelin. Not a great program. They beat them 44-6. to and they ran the ball, only threw it twice. So, Mike Dennis, good job. You found something your guys can do. You banked on it. They ran the ball. They got some confidence, and maybe they're going to win some more games this year. And then a couple of MAC teams that I thought kind of told Coldwater and Marion Local it's not going to be as easy as you might think it will be because Minster beat Fort Loramie, good program, 34-0. to mm -hmm. St. Henry coming back beat another good program, Covington, 34-0 to as well. So those two teams are saying, hey, we're in this race too. Absolutely. Big statement yeah. victory. Yeah. Shutout victory. So the That's defense right. and the offense yeah. on all flying on all cylinders That's for right. all those teams. Good way to start. Great way to start. Great way to start week one. We need to take a break here on Mark's Madness, but when we return, we're going to break down a very important play from one of the closer games in the area. Pandora, Gilboa, Columbus Grove. We'll show you how it ended when we come back. Welcome back to Mark's Madness. Time now to break down a play, which we will do each week here on the show. And this week we're going to pick a, get, pick a play from Pandora Gilboa versus Columbus Grove, a good rivalry game, mm -hmm. and it comes late in the game. Grove is trailing 28-22, but they've got the ball moving with two and a half to play. Well, this is Reed Stexual. He's going to throw a little swing out there with a receiver blocking. Bailey Clement gets it and moves it across midfield. So now they got the ball at about the 39-yard line. And here's the play. He rolls left, Steck Schulte again, and lets her fly. Unnatural side, and down there is his receiver, Aiden Fortman. Now, Aiden gets by the DB that fell. The free safety's not there, and he gets into the end zone. And that put him up, or tied the thing up, and then they win it later. Here, take a look. Good protection up front. Allows the quarterback to let her fly because he's just given his receiver a chance. It is a one-receiver pl play. There's not another red shirt in the screen, and he threw it up. The DB falls, the receiver makes a nice play, gets across the, the goal line, ties it up, and then they win it on a bad snap on a punt later on. But that allowed them to stay in the game, and, and uh, sometimes you just got to throw it down the field and give you guys a chance, and that's what the coach did, and Absolutely. the players executed. How about that throw going across the body? Not easy. When, when you're rolling to no. your left like that, not yeah. an easy play. Well, Reed's an excellent athlete, you know, and that's why he can roll left and do that kind of stuff. And I'm sure part of it was if he's, if you know, if, if absolutely nothing is there, run the ball down the sideline, get out of bounds. They still had a little bit of time on the clock to try to score. They didn't have to score on that last play. Right. But uh, I thought he did a great job of putting a little air under it, and the receiver timed it up. The DB hit the deck. And the other one wasn't in position to make the play, touchdown, and they go on to win the game. There was some contact on that play, and I, I don't, bit. I don't yeah. think a flag was thrown. No. And the play stood 28-28. From there, a safety ends up winning it. Such an exciting yeah. game. 30-28, Grove comes out on top. And a great play all around by Reed Stecksholte and the Bulldogs. Time for another break here on Mark's Madness. When we come back, we're going to preview some of the Week 2 games that we've got our eye on. Third and final down here on Mark's Madness, joined by Mark Miller. I'm Matt Finkel. Mark, now that week one is in the books, we can kind of take a look at the overall mm -hmm. conferences and, and figure out who, who had a strong start. Who do you yeah. think had the best start as a conference overall in week one? Well, I think the best start was Northwest Conference. But the MAC, who everybody around here looks at, you know, and, and they play non-league the first two weeks. So they got another week of non-league games. They went 7-3, and three, and, and uh, you know, some of their – Teams that have been struggling the last couple of years with, that still have proud tradition had big wins, so they could be in for a really good league year. But the Northwest Conference, 7-1, and one, their only loss was Paulding, and they got beat by a very, very good Wayne Trace team, and so they could win some games, and that whole league could have a really good, good year. So we'll see, but uh, 
you know, the MAC is uh, after week number two. We'll see because they'll, they'll beat up on some more non-league people. Absolutely, but great start for the NWC. Yep. Also yep. mentioned the WBL goes five and five, yeah. and and they yeah. had some close games. They lied to St. John's. Yeah. St. John's came out in double overtime double in overtime. that one. Yep. So we're going to yep. see some great football throughout, and this yep. is just a, a little barometer of where the conferences stand. That's right after yeah. week one. Mm -hmm. So now let's turn our attention to week two. Okay. A lot of good games on the schedule. You will be at Ada and you'll be at, at Spencerville, Spencerville with Ada. for Ada mm -hmm. Spencerville, a nice mm -hmm. uh, matchup. That'll be a nice game. Yeah, NWC matchup mm -hmm. right there. What other games do you have your eye on? Well, uh, you know, because of how good they are and that they played last year in the state championship, I got to look at Bishop Hartley at Coldwater. Absolutely. Um, you know, we mentioned that twice Coldwater beat them last year both fairly comfortably although the state championship was closer than the score might indicate but um, you know that that's a big game Columbus Bishop Hartley is a proud program with state championships and they're coming to Coldwater to try to repay them for ruining their season last year they're only two losses yep. uh, and Coldwater you know trying to hold serve we beat Kenton they're pretty good how good are we can we win another one against a quality team? So I, I think that'll be big. Revenge is the factor with Bishop Hartley, no doubt. Absolutely. And think about Coldwater. I mean, there are two non-conference games are Kenton and Bishop Hartley. Then they get into the MAC. Mm -hmm. If they make it back to the state finals, they yeah. will really deserve it. And I know they did the same schedule last year, and they won it all. But they're, I mean, Chip Otten has that group ready to go each yeah. week, and they always have tough opponents. Yeah, he really does. He needs to hang on to those two games because what we're seeing with Marion Local is nobody will play them. Yeah. They're a small school. Nobody wants to get beat by a smaller school, especially good programs. And, and so they're not getting playoff points. Coldwater holds on to Kenton and Bishop Hartley, win, lose, or otherwise, they're going to get lots of points from those guys. Absolutely. LCC has another big game week yep. two, taking on a MAC team in Delphi St. John's. Yeah, uh, you know, that's, that's the war. You know, call it what you want. Basketball or football, the holy war. And, and the, the kids really get up for that one. It's a lot of fun. Uh, and two good programs, Delphus St. John's proved last week that they were able to replace those two elephant backs that they had in there the last couple of years to be a pretty good team, and LCC we know is, is loaded up. I think another game that will be interesting in the city is Lima Senior traveling now to Mansfield Senior. I don't know that Mansfield Senior is as talented as Lima Senior, but they're going to have speed and skill. And to get on a bus and go a couple of hours, that'll be a good test for yep. Mike Fells guys. Um, for sure. Uh, that, that'll be a fun, and that's a great traditional game, too. And, and then the WBL. Yeah, that you know, open the, league, league play starts. That's right. League play starts in a big way because you got Bath at Salina. Bath played very well against LCC but lost, and Salina is good. So Bath, you know, doesn't want to start off the season 0-2. Elida at Defiance, same kind of thing. Elida's 0-1, going up to Defiance, tough place to play. And then what could be for the league championship, this is awful early to say that, but Wapak at Kenton. Huge game. Yeah, Kenton doesn't want to go 0-2. Uh, they haven't done that in forever. Right. And But Wapak's really good, so let's see what happens there. Coach, We're going to find out a lot about the WBL with the result of those three games. Big week for the WBL. Yeah. Coach Travis Moyer has that, that win streak of his own in the yeah. 50s, so we'll hey. see what Wapak and, and yeah. Kenton yeah. get get to get when they get together this week. Also, you can check out Corey Ross and USV on the Family of Networks. Ada Spencerville, you'll be there. Bishop Hartley Coldwater and that St. John's LCC game will also be on either WOSN or WTLW. That's going to do it for this edition of Mark's Madness. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time on WOSN.